I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering and data analytics. In this episode, we're going to return to our Microsoft Access playlist, and we're gonna talk about a special kind of query called a pass-through query. And a pass-through query is very, very handy. Uh, it, it allows you to run a query <clears throat> against an SQL Server database or other kind of database like Oracle, uh, similar to how you use a linked table, um, but it allows you to specify the query and then have all of the execution of the query happen on the server, which makes it very efficient. And it also allows you to do things like uh, call stored procedures and all kinds of other things like that. And so without further ado, let's get to our Microsoft Access pass-through queries. Okay, so for this example, I'm using the same database I was using before, uh, which has a table called climate change data, and we can thank the World Bank for this data. Um, you can get it from their website, and uh, this particular table has all kinds of measures in it, um, and that's the access table, uh, which I have uh, migrated into SQL Server. Um, so here here we go, there's my uh, query, and you can see down below the query result if I run it again. Um, and you can see there's the country name and the series code and all that stuff. And so I can scroll down through this data just the same as I did on my access table. Uh, but that data is stored in SQL Server, and that's the data that we're going to query using a pass-through query today. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go uh, create new query and you can close that little pop-up that comes up and uh, uh, you can just see it's a blank uh, query uh, screen there and we're going to click on the pass through button and uh, then what you can do is you can go over to the uh, ODBC connect string and you can click the little ellipsis there and uh, that's gonna um, that's going to uh, open up the ODBC uh, uh, connection data source manager and uh, make sure that it's uh, opening the same uh, bit uh, that you have. So if it's 32-bit uh, office, you're going to need the 32-bit um, data source. And then you'll go create a new, new data source and give it a name. And then uh, you can click finish there. And then this is where we'll go and we'll find our uh, server and and our uh, table. So, so we'll give it a description, climate change data on SQL Server, and I'm just going to type in the the name of my server there, and uh, and then uh, we'll choose uh, ser our our SQL Server authentication. You might have your server set up with Windows authentication, and uh, uh, you're going to change your default database to the database that you want and then just click next and then uh, you can click finish. You can usually take the default settings in there and uh, and then test your data source. You should get a com completed successfully message. You can go OK and then OK and then OK and then you'll be prompted this one time to pop in your your username and credential again if you're using SQL Server uh, authentication and not Windows authentication. And this is important here. This is uh, whether or not you want to store the password in the connection string, which uh, I would recommend to say no, um, just because uh, that password can be fished out. Um, and uh, if you say no, you'll be prompted one time when you open your application. Uh, but it will be more secure than storing it in there, even, if, even though that might be more um, convenient. So I'm just popping up the uh, SQL Server table again. I'm just going to take a look and see. Uh, okay, so there's our countries. It's called country space name in there. And then there's our series code right beside it. Um, so I'll just minimize that. So we'll make a, a basic query here to start. Um, and so this would probably perform similarly uh, fast to if you just had a linked table. Um, <clears throat> however, if you had a query um, where you had a whole bunch of different 
uh, joins happening or multi-level levels of joins of linked tables, um, that can start to get slow and that's where the pass-through query becomes really uh, preferable. So I'm just going to select star from climate change data where country name is uh, equal to Canada. And if I run that, um, boom, there you go. There's our data. It's not coming from that table, that access table. It's actually coming from uh, over the ODBC connection to the SQL server. And so <clears throat> you can see uh, it's got all the fields, all the names, and it's pretty snappy. Um, <clears throat> and uh, uh, we can uh, go ahead and, and save that. It looks pretty good. Um, doesn't seem to be any issues with the data, the connection. Um, so I'll just hit Control S for save, and then I'll just call this query to start a climate uh, a, a change uh, Canada uh, SQL for SQL Server. And there you go. As soon as I save it, you can see the little world icon um, beside that one. And what that is, is that's going to, um, that allows us to, say, if I close this, anytime you double click it, um, you'll, just like you can um, double click that one, the access table, um, you can do the same with your one there. But I'll, I'll rename the, uh, the access table just so it's clear. If we ran the same statement against the access, it would fail because the name has changed. But there's our Climate Change Data Canada. Um, and so if I go back to design, I can add another parameter, for example. Um, I could grab that uh, series code there, which is land area below 5 meters, uh, percentage of land area in country. And, uh, you know, I could add that as... Uh, as another um, uh, a clause, a part of my uh, WHERE clause. And I'll show you how to use a uh, parameterized query here in a minute on SQL Server. Uh, but you can see there's our, um, our series code has been added. So now you've got more of a, a, a filter down query hitting the server. And so SQL Server, the nice thing is it's only returning one record, um, which makes it quite efficient um, for these queries. So there's, you know, Canada and there's our series code. And uh, <clears throat> whereas Access, um, in a lot of cases, Access will bring over pages of data um, to do the, you know, if you're working on a remote, um, on a remote um, file, um, it, it often will bring over pages of data and then do the query, whereas when you operate against SQL Server, uh, you're actually um, sending the command and only receiving the results. So I'll do something here. I'm going to create a procedure on SQL Server, um, and I'm just going to call it Climate Series, uh, Climate Country Series, and, and I'll add a couple parameters here in a minute. Um, and I'll just say select star from climate change data, exactly kind of similar to what we just were querying. Uh, but I'll say where country code or country name uh, is equal to, and then I'll say at country. Um, and um, uh, that's going to give me a parameter um, that I can supply. And then I'll say and series code is equal to and then the series code and uh, and uh, so this is gonna um, allow me to just ask for the store procedure when I call over my uh, pass-through query and uh, and that's gonna make it a lot more efficient but it also makes it a bit more secure um, because I'll just be passing um, parameters over the wire uh, to my SQL server as opposed to, you know, maybe hard coding it or whatever or, or, or you know, doing um, something like that. So, so um, this is where we can, uh, you know, I'll do this, I'll create this procedure. I'll, I'll say uh, go on the end there and uh, hit F5 
and that's going to create that store procedure. So whenever I call it store procedure, it's going to run that statement and put those parameters in for me. And that's going to make it not only nice and efficient, uh, but it's going to be easy to run because I can make a very short SQL string. So if I test it out here in SQL Server, um, I can say, you know, uh, exec climate country series, Canada is the first argument, and then uh, I'll grab another, grab, a, grab this one here, um, the, uh, the first series code, just for, for fun. Um, so if I plug those in and call my um, store procedure, um, then, um, then that's going to return just the result set, and I don't even have to specify the, the SQL statement because that's part of the procedure. So there you go, there's my Canada for that um, series code, and that's how that works on SQL Server. But you might be wondering, well, how does that work on Access? And that's exactly what we'll, we'll do here. Um, so if we wanted to, we can, we can open up our Climate Change Canada, and I guess it won't be a Canada query any longer because we're going to change it, but we're going to paste in that um, uh, test that we did from our SQL Server, and I can just run that just the same way that we did on SQL Server, um, because it plugs those um, those um, parameters for us, which is really nice. And uh, and so uh, that makes it a nice, efficient way to change it up and uh, make it simple, so that when you're uh, typing into Access uh, in your Access query. You're just asking for a very short statement, and, and that store procedure could be huge. It could have all kinds of um, all kinds of joins and and stuff in it, and loops and procedures. And so uh, you can make it very very easy to to have that functionality from Microsoft Access. Well, you might be asking yourself, how can I change this sort of on the fly? And uh, and you can definitely do that um, using VBA. In fact. Once your, uh, you know, your pass-through query has been created, um, you can pass just about any SQL to it that you want, um, so, um, which makes it uh, very nice and flexible for calling all different kinds of uh, store procedures or queries uh, because you can change the query SQL um, of, your, um, new, of your new uh, pass through query, you can actually change it um, in your code as your as your um, you know your program runs. So for this example, what I'll do is I'll create a, a subroutine here. I'll just call it uh, change the query, and I'll do uh, you know dim query as uh, uh, dao dot query def, and uh, and then I'll uh, dim str sql as uh, and in this case I'll I'll use our I'll paste in our uh, the one that we had before. So there you go, um, exec climate country series Canada. Although we could do the actual select statement here and uh, and and make that the source of our query uh, because as I mentioned, we can change the SQL of the um, of the pass through query to pretty much anything that we want. Um, so. I'll add some uh, single quotes around that, and then I'll add the uh, str code. Um, you can also do this using uh, parameters and an ADODB call, uh, which will make it a bit more secure. Um, but this is a simple example of just how to do how to change the uh, the SQL in your uh, pass through query. So uh, there we go. We've got the full. The full SQL statement looks pretty good, so I'll go ahead and set my <clears throat> our, my query a variable equal to the current DB query defs, and then I'll grab that name, which is Climate Change uh, Canada SQL, and uh, and so now what we're doing is we're setting our our query uh, or our, our query def variable um, to our new password query. So that after that we can actually just say query SQL is equal to our SQL statement, and then we can uh, from there we can close it and move on to I don't know just we'll just actually open the query here, 
and uh, so I'll just do a do command dot open query uh, which will open our our query and I'll give our query name as the uh, argument first argument uh, climate country series or pardon me climate change uh, Canada SQL and uh, and then I'll put some quotes around that and uh, and then uh, I'll add a uh, we'll we'll save that first and then I'll we can go and try and run it from the immediate window and so in order to do that I'll jump down to our immediate window there and uh, I'll put in our uh, sub name so I'll just say change the query um, and then uh, I'll put in the two arguments uh, for France and for um, what was that code uh, or we can grab a different code or maybe the same one um, yeah we'll We'll grab that and then there we go and then we can uh, uh, we can try to run that oh it looks like there's a bug there so I'll add a AC view normal on the end here just to see if that was it so you can call your open your query in various ways um, I'll just put AC view normal and uh, and then uh, I'll also change my quotes here I've been working in SQL Server too much with my single quotes. Put those into doubles, and uh, and then we can run that one. There we go. So, so now if I just move this out of the way, you can see there's France and uh, it's with the series series code that I asked for. Um, so this, if this was a big heavy query in the background for some reason, um, this would be probably the most efficient way of doing it. Um, because you're literally sending over a very small command to the SQL server and receiving back only the record that matches. So we could go ahead and change that. We could put Serbia in for the country name and run that. And you could see up above there, uh, there you go, Serbia for the same one, um, returning that value. And uh, if we had... Um, uh, another maybe a different measure country and measure uh, say we did Japan and we grabbed I don't know let's just find a different measure here so um, I'll open that table and I'll scroll down a bit and just sort of till we get something different there you go there's serial yield so I could grab that one copy that and then paste that in over top and you you get the idea if I put that in then I run this query I'm going to get back just the record that I want and so that gives the serial yield uh, kilogram per hectare for Japan and uh, and that's um, sort of how that one works and that is how you can use a pass-through query in Microsoft Access I hope you enjoyed today's discussion about how to do pass-through queries in Microsoft Access if you like what you saw today please make sure to give a thumbs up to the video and uh, subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet. Click the bell when you see the bell and uh, put any questions or comments that you might have in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.